Okay. This is the second uh, presentation of Elements of Neural Network and Deep Learning Part 2 and I am Tinium B. Ganesh. As in my previous uh, uh, presentation, this presentation is also based on material from two courses, Neural Networks and Deep Learning, a uh, Deep Learning Specialization by Professor Andrew Ng in Coursera and Neural Networks on Machine Learning by Professor Jeffrey Hinton at Coursera and two books, Neural Networks and Deep Learning by Michael Nielsen and Deep Learning Book by Ian Goodfellow. Yoshua Benji and Aaron Corwell. Besides, I've also used a lot of other material from the internet. Now, in our uh, first uh, presentation, I showed you how, with the toy example, uh, where we tr were trying to determine the price of the burger, um, we could adjust the weights, and uh, uh, <coughs> by adjusting the weights, we can try to make the output be as close to the real output. But this was through trial and error. And we see that with a small change in uh, the weight delta w, there is a corresponding change in the output. Ideally, what we would like to have is to have a, an automated procedure by which we can modify the weight in such a way that for any training example, the output is very close, the estimated output is very close to the actual output. And this in neural networks and also in machine learning is done by, through a process called gradient descent. The only difference is in neural networks, we have two passes, one is known as the forward propagation and another one is known as the backward propagation for each gradient descent. And in each of these uh, cycles, we will be adjusting the weights and uh, making sure that our error or loss is as low as possible. Now in this uh, second presentation, I would like to take logistic regression as an example and I would like to model a two-layer neural network for this logistic regression. Logistic regression is a supervised machine learning algorithm and essentially logistic regression the output is one of two classes. The data set is labeled that is the output can be either a 1 or a 0. That is for example if you had a cancer tissue the tissue could be cancerous or it could be benign or if you are trying to identify whether it's uh, email the mail is either spam or not spam. So it is really 1 or 0 or really one of two distinct classes. Now, logic regression, as I said, is a supervised machine learning algorithm with the output being either 0 or 1. And the goal of logic regression is to minimize the error between the predictions and the training data. So, for example, if we had a data set, uh, what we would typically do is we would um, basically take 60% of the data and train our uh, uh, logistic regression algorithm uh, with certain weights we would have and uh, uh, for each of the input which is x1 up to xi and a bias term, we would uh, uh, determine the uh, activation value z. But since logistic regression is either a 0 or 1, we need to somehow be able to transform this uh, weighted uh, value into either a 0 or 1. And fortunately in maths, there is a useful function known as a sigmoid function, which we will look uh, later, which will essentially take one of two values, which is basically 0 or 1. And this particular equation, where I have w1, x1, w2, x2, up to w, i, x, a plus b, can be written as w transpose x, where w is a weight vector and x is basically the input features. Actually, I have put only one vector here. Actually, in the training example, you could have m uh, training examples. And, and y hat is the estimated value. So I can take y transpose of x plus b and pass it to the sigmoid function and the output estimated value will be either very close to 0 or very close to 1. So let us look at what the sigmoid function is. It's a mathematical function. So for example, if you have an activation of w1x1 plus w2x2 plus b and you uh, use the, uh, the sigmoid function, uh, sigma of z, where it is defined as 1 plus 1 by e power minus z. This sigmoid function, if you look at it, uh, the, its characteristics, at 0 it has a value of 0 0.5 and as you increase from 0, it slowly increases and then for larger values, uh, it actually plateaus at 1. Similarly, for less than 0, the value of the sigma, uh, sigmoid function decreases and for a very large negative value, it actually becomes 0. And we can see this. So if z is very large, if I take a sigma of z, then it becomes 1 by 1 plus e power of a very large positive number which will uh, e power uh, minus of a very large positive number which will be very close to 0 hence it will be 1 by 1 plus 0 which is 1 if z is very small or negative then it will be 1 plus 1 by 
e power minus of a negative number which will be a positive number which will be 1 plus infinity so 1 by infinity will be essentially 0 so you can see regardless of what value you pass for z the sigmoid function will essentially take one of two values which is zero or one or zero so we can model this logistic regression as a two layer neural network so this will be the input layer where i have the features x1 x2 and a bias term and i assign base w1 and w2 and i compute the uh, actuation z is equal to w1 x1 multiplied by the features and the weights and the bias and then i pass it through the actual sigmoid function to get the output which is either a 0 or 1 this is a sigmoid function so actually we have two layers the input layer and the output layer and nothing more than that and here i compute what is known as the loss in the case of a multivariate regression we usually determine how well our machine learning algorithm fits the actual data by computing what is known as the mean squared error that is how close is the estimated value to the actual value and we take the square of that and uh, uh, compute the average of that in the case of uh, logistic regression where our value can either be a 0 or 1 the technique used is to use this loss function which is given by this formula loss of a and a and y a comma y where a is the estimated value and y is the actual value is, is given by minus of y log a minus of 1 minus a log of 1 minus a now let us look a little closer at this loss function and why it works this loss uh, the estimated value as you have seen y hat is given by sigma of w transpose of x plus b where sigma is the sigmoid function given by 1 plus uh, 1 over 1 plus e power minus z now we want this y hat or the estimated value of y to be very close to the actual y the loss function uh, as, as we saw in the previous slide is given by loss of y estimate and the actual y is given by minus y minus of y log of y hat plus 1 minus y log of 1 minus y hat now if we can see if for example y is equal to 1 then what happens is this term becomes 0 so we'll be only left with this term which will reduce to minus of log y hat now we can see that if our y hat also is very close to y which is 1 then the loss will become 0 that is because it will become minus log of 1 which is essentially 0 so essentially if y is 1 and y hat is very close to 1 then our loss is 0 which is good that means we are doing a good prediction alternatively if y is 0 then this term goes away and all we are left is, is, with, is this term and which reduces to minus of log of 1 minus y hat now if y hat is very close to 0 that is if this is very close to 0 then all we are left, is, left with is minus log of 1 which is again 0 so basically if y is 1 and y hat is close to 1 our loss is 0 if y is 0 and y hat is close to 0 then our loss is 0 which is exactly what we want we want the loss to be as close to 0 when our estimated value y hat is very close to the real output y now we can compute the cost function what is the cost now uh, this loss is for a single trading uh, example now if we had m trading examples the cost is the average of the loss over the m trading uh, example so it is a 1 by m uh, sigma of the loss over m trading examples mm -hmm. and the what we need to do is we, uh, we need to find the cost which is minimum and that uh, if, if we, when we find the minimum cost then those set of weights will give us the best fitting uh, uh, logistic regression algorithm or our neural network that is essentially the goal of this what is gradient gradient descent gradient descent essentially tries to identify the weights for our uh, weight uh, for, for the inputs for each of these features uh, such that uh, the combination of weights and bias gives us the best fit for any of the trading examples so regardless of which trading example uh, you, you you use if you use the w transpose into the input feature vector plus bias and the estimated output should be very close to the actual uh, uh, y output now if I plot the cost and the weight and uh, it will be a parabolic curve and uh, if I take the gradient uh, at any point on this curve if I take it at this point the gradient will be a positive value so if I add an alpha is what is known as the learning rate so if I take the weight and I subtract from the weight a small value uh, learning rate alpha 
and the gradient which will be a positive value that is essentially I will be decreasing the weight uh, I'll be moving in this direction so every point on this side uh, when I do W minus alpha of the gradient which is a positive value I'll be slowly moving into this direction whereas if I started from here then w, uh, the uh, gradient djwb by uh, dwi would be negative and I would have minus of uh, this learning rate into the gradient would, would essentially be a positive number so my new value of wi this is an iteration will actually increase so if I start from this side of the slope I will actually move towards this and finally wherever I start I will come to this minimum and at this point the weights I have is the weight I will have to use for my neural network or the uh, logistic regression. The reason why this uh, loss function is chosen is because it has a very nice property, it has a very nice, it, it, it is a nice convex bound and when we uh, perform green descent on it, we can easily find the minima. So typically in green descent, the essential goal of green descent in, in a neural network is to identify the weights and biases at the input layer such that this combination for every training uh, uh, example in your data set will give you an estimated value of y which is as close to the actual real y and the way this gradient descent is done in uh, neural network is it goes through a, a cycle we go through one cycle of forward propagation and then we will go through a backward propagation we will compute the cost uh, the next time again we will go through forward propagation we will compute gradients and we'll uh, do a backward propagation and again we'll compute the cost typically the cost will tend to uh, fall and if the, if the cost does not fall uh, decrease then you may have to adjust the learning rate so essentially we'll have to iterate in the forward and the backward passes which we will see later and essential goal is by doing this we minimize uh, <coughs> and try to attain the best values of the weights in the input, uh, in the input layer such that this combination of weights and biases the input layer for the given data set will give you the best estimated value and the lowest error. So in this pro forward propagation, let's take a forward propagation error. So this basic logic regression, what we are doing is we have two features x1 and x2 and we have weights w1 and w2 and, and a bias term. We find the activation w1 x1 plus w2 x2 plus b and then after we find the activation we pass it through a sigmoid function which will give us a value uh, uh, either very close to 1 or close to 0 and from that we find the loss which is given by minus y log a minus 1 minus a log of 1 minus a now uh, the next thing as I said the goal of gradient descent is to finally find out the values of the weights uh, w1 uh, and w2 which result is the best uh, fit and the way we do that is we need to find the gradient descent which means we have to find the, uh, the, the rate uh, of uh, the, the, the DL by uh, DW that is essentially what we have to find and the way we find DW, DL by DW1 and DL by DW2 to apply in a gradient descent uh, uh, iterative uh, approach is to uh, do back propagation so first we have a loss so first we find out the DL by DA now since uh, D by DX of log X is 1 by X a, we can easily see that uh, dl by da is minus of y by a plus 1 minus uh, <coughs> 1 minus uh, a log of uh, minus 1 minus uh, y log of uh, by divided by 1 minus a so let's look at some key results let uh, y equal to so as i said uh, first we, uh, we have to find uh, the <coughs> the way, uh, the combination of weights which will result in the lowest loss so first we find dl by da which is you take the derivative of this which will be minus y divided by a plus 1 minus y divided by 1 minus a since d by dx of log x is equal to 1 by x this is very straightforward next before we go on further i would like to quickly uh, show some uh, quick results this first thing is known as the chain rule let y equal to uh, if y is a function of u and u is a function of x then what is d dy by dx or df by dx that you do is dy by dx is equal to dy by du into du by dx okay this is known as the chain rule now uh, 
we have already seen the sigmoid function is given by sigma z is equal to 1 divided by 1 plus e power minus z. Now the way we can find the derivative of the sigmoid function is let's assume x is equal to 1 plus e power minus z. Then sigma of z we can rewrite, uh, rewrite it as 1 divided by x since uh, x is equal to 1 plus e power minus z. Now I take d sigma by uh, dou x. The derivative of this will become minus of 1 by x squared and now if I, for x again I substitute this I get minus of 1 by 1 plus e power minus z the whole square. Now those x by dou z if I derivate, derive this do a derivative of this it is minus of e power minus z because we have a minus sign here. Now using the same chain rule dou sigma by dou z is equal to that is now we, uh, we are trying to find dou sigma by dou z is equal to dou sigma by dou x into dou x by dou z. Now since dou sigma by dou x is minus of 1 plus e power minus z the whole square I substitute it here and dou x by dou z is equal to e power minus z I substitute it here. So I rewrite this as e power minus z uh, the two minus signs cancel e power minus z divided by 1 plus e power minus z the whole square. Now well, I can rewrite this as 1 by 1 plus e power minus z into 1 minus 1 plus e power minus z uh, and now since 1 plus e power minus z is already we know as sigma this is now basically reduces to sigma into 1 minus sigma. Now we have already found out uh, <coughs> dl by dA which was uh, dL by dA which was this. Now in this next step we find dl by dz. dl by dz using the chain rule becomes dl by dA and then dA by dz. Now dl by dA which we already found was minus 1 by a plus 1 minus a divided by 1 minus a and dA by dz is the derivative we found for uh, the sigmoid is really uh, a into 1 minus a or sigma into 1 minus sigma. Now dl by dz is really uh, dl by dA and dA by dz so I basically take this uh, factor this uh, 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 term and I multiply it by this term and if I multiply and reduce it I'll get it uh, get the value a minus y. Now again uh, I'm reiterating the reason why we are uh, finding the derivatives uh, for each of this is because we finally want to arrive at the derivative for uh, dl by dw1 and dl by dw2 and dl by db because then only we can apply the iterative formula for gradient descent. Now uh, the last step is we need to find as I said dl by dw1 and uh, dl by dw2 and dl by db and the reason why we did the earlier uh, dl by dA or dA by dz is because we have to come to that formula. Now dl by dw1 again using the chain rule we have is equal to dl by dA dA by dz into dz by dw1. Now dl by dz we have already found out here is a minus y so we leave that as it is. So dl by dw1 if I re uh, replace this by dl by dz I, I'm only left with this. So I have dz by d1 into dl by dz which is x1 into dl by dz and actually uh, dl by dz we already know as a into 1 minus a. Similarly dl by d2 is dz uh, but, uh, divided by dw2 to dl by dz which is x2 to dl by dz essentially meaning it's x2 to a minus 1 minus a and dl by db is equal to dz by db into dl uh, by dz and basically if I uh, <coughs> do dz by db all these become constant so it's essentially 1 so it is 1 into dl by dz so uh, just in case uh, <coughs> dz by dw1 is basically this, these two terms become constant it is essentially uh, uh, x1 so that is what you see here x1 and x2. Now here is a nice computation graph uh, which is uh, in the other book the deep learning book. You start with the loss and then when you do dl by dA we have already seen it is minus 1 by a plus 1 minus y divided by 1 minus a and then we have the activation function which is uh, <coughs> which is z is equal to uh, which is uh, now we do dA by dz which is a here is the sigmoid function and we have already seen uh, dA by uh, d, uh, dz is uh, a into 1 minus a. Now we can to get at this layer you can now find dL by uh, <coughs> here, here you, uh, you, you will find um, 
uh, what is that uh, dl by da into uh, da by dz will finally give you dl by dz which is a, a minus y similarly uh, D, dz by dwi is xi and dz by uh, db is equal to 1 which we have already seen and if I multiply by this factor I will finally get dl by wi is xi a minus y and dl by db is a minus y which is what we saw here dl by dw1 is x1 into a into 1 minus a and dl by D, dw2 is x2 into a, a into 1 minus a and dl by db is uh, a into 1 minus a which is exactly what you dl by db is a minus uh, a minus y okay so that is what you see here and once you have these values of dl and dwi and dl and db you can iteratively apply uh, and get the weights and uh, if you keep on uh, applying this uh, formula iteratively you will find that the cost uh, each time you do this you compute the cost and once you compute the cost you have to find the minimum cost which will result uh, keep on finding uh, the lowest cost till you reach a point where the cost does not decrease much and at that point you stop your gradient descent and that is the best set of weights for your logistic regression or your neural network. Thank you.